Hello, everybody, and welcome along to Sebring International Raceway, the home of America uh, in, for, in terms of endurance racing and, of course, the original uh, venue for the US Grand Prix. What a season it's been. Brilliant work by IMSA, by the promoters, the series, uh, and, of course, the tracks and the teams, drivers, and yourselves uh, in terms of making this season happen. A little bit of cloud uh, here at Sebring International Raceway as we say hello uh, to you all on IMSA Radio, IMSA TV and here at Sebring International Raceway right in central Florida with 17 corners, three and three quarter miles on concrete that's been here long before there was a racetrack here in 1950 and the old school nature noted by the fact we have turned names as much as we have turned numbers as well with Ullman Strait and Gurney and Sunset and Jean de Bian Bend as well of course as the happy down at turn seven tower turn just underlining the previous history of this hallowed ground hallowed concrete particularly as Hendrick Air Force Hendrick's Air Force base that trained bomber crews in uh, the run-up and through World War II on Flying Fortress and Liberator aircraft. Very much a place that evokes history. Uh, Jeremy Shaw is alongside me, John Heindorf, as we get ready for our 45-minute penultimate round of the season. And Jeremy Shaw has the lineup for this all-important first race of a fast Friday here at Sebring. Yeah, good morning to everybody. Bright and early start here for the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. Round 15 out of 16 this season. That's more importantly the 20, 222nd out of 23 that will make up the history of this uh, Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA. It's 18 cars on the starting grid. There are 15 platinum cars and three gold cup cars. Starting at the very back, it's the championship leader in gold cup. That's kind of a uh, Kurt Swearingen for ACI Motorsports in car number 44, carrying a very, very heavy heart. His father passed away unexpectedly just recently. He will start at the back of the field. Really, all he has to do is start the two races this weekend to be assured of the championship. Alongside him, uh, in the 17th position on the grid is Bart Collins in car number five. Moving ahead to row eight, Charlie Craig in car number 76 with Vernon McClure starting a lot further back than he would have anticipated in car number 10. Row seven is Danny Hardy from Florida in car number 69, alongside Efren Castro in car number 65. 12th position on the starting grid uh, for his first ever pole position in the Gold Cup category for ACI Motorsports in car number 18, that's Richard Edge. Alongside him, David Brule Sr. in car number 48. All of the top 11 cars are platinum class contenders. Frank Razzo will start car number 57 in the 10th position, alongside Kurt Hunt in car number 24. Michael Manella in car number 4 will start in the 8th position, alongside Charlie Luck the 4th in car number 45. TJ Fisher in car number 56 and Sebastian Carrazzo car number 27 will share row 3 of the grid. Moving on to the second row on the outside, Alan Metney in car number 99, the Masters Cup championship leader in Ke for Kelly Moss AM Motorsports. Alongside for JDX Racing in car number 11, the Californian Sean McAllister. Onto the front row of the grid, the guy that led most of the pra all of the practice sessions will start second today. That's Riley Dickinson in car number 53 for more speed, but on the pole position, the championship leader. His seventh pole of the year, looking to wrap up the championship this weekend for Kelly Moss Road and Racing in car number 16 from Ajax, Ontario in Canada. Our pole sitter is Jeff Kingsley. That's the way they line up, 45 minutes on the clock. Championship implications, of course, but for the moment, let's not worry about that too much and enjoy the early morning thick, still central Florida air being cracked apart by the flat six four litre direct injections of the Gen 2 991 Cup cars at the front of the fields and the 3.8s of the first generation Cup cars that make up the GT3 Gold category. All change next year, but that is a little way away for now and still some silverware to be decided. Coming through the Jean de Bian bends, the safety car lights are off and we will be going racing 
next time by the start finish line on the front straight although it should be noticed that these cars uh, came out of what we call the WEC pits on the Ullman straight the back straight uh, because all of the challenge series this weekend uh, will be uh, pitting in that area so if we see someone go missing and we can't see them in the front strip pits it's probably because their pit crews are set up in the WEC pit lane which they are just passing right now in this beautiful diffused morning light here on the Mobile One 12 hours of Sebring weekend presented by Advance Auto Parts we get things underway with Porsches field just forming up side by side the bright yellow Porsche 911 safety car has the lights out and will pull away through turn 17 at sunset Jeff Kingsley and Riley Dickinson the two championship protagonists right on the front row watch out for Sean McAllister for JDX in the red white and yellow shell sponsored car and Alan Metney, he's a quick starter too in the all-white car. That's a brand new car for Alan Metney. Hadn't even been sign written earlier on in the weekend, but I noticed that he's got the iFly decals on the door. Very close, the front row as they come onto the start-finish line. And now the pole sitter then controlling the field. The green flag is in the air for the penultimate time in 2020 in the IMSA. Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. One, two, three, four, five across the track on the old concrete down into turn one. And what a start from Riley Dickinson in the more speed Porsche. He rockets into the lead and takes a decent advantage through turn two and probably already a couple of cars lengths ahead before he heads into the braking area at turn three. Looked as though Jeff Kingsley held on to second place under pressure from Sean McAllister and Alan Metney underneath the Corvette bridge at turn five and six, heading down towards the hairpin at turn seven, and just did notice a car dropping off the back of the field there. May have been some early contact. Uh, I think I think that was Kurt Swearingen actually for ACI Motorsports, the GT3 Gold class leader, as the front of the field heads down to the far side of the circuit and already a good lead Jeremy Shaw built up by Riley Dickinson from the more speed team over his championship contender or the man he's battling for the championship with Jeff Kingsley yes indeed John a pretty uh, messy start there it looked like uh, I'm sure the uh, officials would be looking at that just make sure there was no that uh, Riley Dickinson didn't go a little bit too soon but uh, he certainly made a great getaway. Jeff Kings, who was kind of caught napping the pole sitter, but he is in second position. Uh, at the back of the field, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Kurt Swearing, and I'm sure uh, all he needs to do is start both of the races this weekend. So he's had some awful uh, family news this, this week. So, you know, he's not really in, the, in kind of the racing spirit, if you like, at the moment. So uh, I think he's just kind of taking it cautious there. Not sure whether he'll even complete the race, but even, as long as he starts, he gets the, he gets the points that he needs to uh, pretty much wrap up the championship. We need to do the same again tomorrow. Uh, but uh, that was a great start there by Riley Dickinson. He was the guy who led each of the practice sessions on Thursday. But when, when it came down to qualify, Jeff Kingsley, he's been the man this season. He put down a couple of laps to, uh, to, to take the pole position, not only for today's race, but also for tomorrow's finale, because it's a second lap in qualifying that sets the grid for the second race of the weekend, unless anybody goes quicker in race one. Yeah, and should just notice that it is standard procedure that the IMSA race control will check the start. They'll be doing that now. Uh, those of you with live timing and scoring may see that come up on the race control part uh, of the Alcamel timing uh, and wonder what's going on. Absolutely standard that that is what happens and we'll find out soon enough if there was anything awry with that. Well, the first part is that we've got everybody through the first lap and a bit without any major uh, incident. So what we have at the front of the field is a one and a half second lead by Riley Dickinson, who has streaked off uh, into the distance. Charlie Luck battling with TJ Fisher and uh, Michael Manellas right there as well in 6th, 7th and 8th. Charlie 
in the rainbow sided number 45 car sits in second at the moment in the masters category both in this race and in the championship alan metney in the white number 99 i fly car in fourth in this race leads that masters category for drivers uh, who have a little more experience of life not necessarily more experience of racing have to be over a number I'll, 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 I'll not even mention that uh, that carries forward by the way into uh, next year as well there will still be a pro-am category for uh, drivers who have a bit more life experience and we are expecting the 992 between 15 and 20 992 cup cars which if you haven't seen a picture of it yet go and have a look uh, it is an awesome looking thing and being assured uh, by Porsche in the USA of their continued commitment to this championship and in fact increasing with a brand new championship next, next year the Porsche Carrera Cup USA all on the East Coast eight venues 16 events and unsurprisingly I think Jeremy giving the terrible uh, news of a significant family bereavement for Kurt Swearing earlier this week uh, under uh, very shocking conditions uh, not an expected uh, issue at all for poor Kurt and the rest of his family he has pulled off into the pits having started the race and therefore got uh, some points which will put him even one step closer to the championship title yes indeed uh, john and they're carrying a different number this weekend carrying number 44 he regularly uh, ran car number 17 during the season but 44 was uh, uh, his father was a racer as well and uh, he carried that number so uh, Kurt carry, carrying the number 44 in tribute this weekend yeah nice touch and of course our sincere condolences to kurt to all of his family and friends that awful news are coming through extremely unexpectedly uh, just this week just under 40 minutes to go then at the front of the field it's still about a second and a half between first and second dickinson from kingsley then sean mcallister for jdx racing in the shell sponsored car further down the field little battles going on as ever tj fisher has sebastian carrazzo and uh, charlie look the fourth ahead of him and down through the jean de bian bends that battle fairly equidistant at the moment Sebastian Carrazzo in slightly different colours, Jeremy, this week to what we mm. normally see him. Normally bright highlighter yellow, but a three-tone car for Sebastian in the 27 Kelly Moss Road and race machine uh, at the moment. Describe that for you again in a few moments' time. Uh, as into the pit lane comes the number 69 car, and now that again, not expe expected. Uh, and have they pulled into the main pits? No, well, that's a drive-through penalty for ah. a false start for car number 69. Uh, so uh, that was by uh, Danny Hardy, is uh, into the pit lane from Vero Beach in Florida, one of the Masters contenders, driving for TPC Racing. He's a, uh, a real estate developer, done a lot of club racing, uh, particularly in the southeast here. So that'll be disappointing for Danny. He was looking forward to a, a you know, good, strong race to, to round out the season here. Uh, but uh, he's going to be able to, to rejoin now, having served that penalty. Yeah, he will be at the back of the field, and he'll need a caution to catch up with anybody else. And serve that penalty on the back straight pit as well. Should mention, uh, we were talking about TPC there, the number 18, uh, excuse me, the number 76 uh, TPC racing car, platinum car, did not start this race. It was on the entry list uh, uh, in the 18 car entry list but did not start the race so if uh, you are rooting for that car sadly we won't be seeing it in this early morning run here just coming up to 10 minutes past eight on a fast friday morning with a packed day of racing live in sound and vision across the circuit and across the world with just on 37 minutes to go of the imsa Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. One more round after this one, and the lead at the front has been trimmed just a tiny bit. It's just over a second at the moment. Was a second and a half from Riley Dickinson to uh, Jeff Kingsley. 
new colour scheme, as I mentioned, for the 27 car this week, and a new sponsor on the side of Sebastian Carrazo's Calimos Road and Race Machine as well. Everybody's still making plans for next year, but the teal blue, uh, yellow and red colour scheme on the 27 uh, this weekend, and the yellow, uh, not even the highlight of yellow that we saw, so it's not just a new vinyl laid on either end, that is a complete livery change, and carrying the Beechwood sponsorship down the side of that car. So thank you to them for supporting Sebastian and uh, the sport. He's in a cracking battle at the moment, Jeremy, for uh, fifth, sixth and seventh position, right in the middle of that. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Uh, Alan Al Mentley still leads the, in the Masters, con uh, Masters Cup uh, class in kind of a 99, just one position ahead of Charlie Luck in that, uh, group, that familiar green, red, red and white car number 45 run for, for Wright Motorsports. But, uh, two, two youngsters, uh, Sebastian Carrazzo and uh, TJ Fisher, who's driving number 56 car this weekend for top racing. Uh, are uh, hot on his heels. TJ Fisher, by the way, he's taken over to this number 56 car from Kenny Murillo, who's ridden for most of the season. And after this race, or after this weekend is done, TJ Fisher is going to be hopping hop back to California, and then down to Baja, where he's going to, going to be competing in the off-road race this weekend. Not, he's not alone, actually. Uh, the, uh, the Porsche Motorsports manager uh, over here, the USA, is uh, Jeremy Sund. He's also going to be doing it, as is Jeff Stone, who is the team principal at Kelly a dominant force in this championship over the years. Competed in the very, very first race way back in 2005. Competed in every race since then. 70 wins overall to the credit of Kelly Moss coming into this weekend. Uh, right now, running in second place, however, having had the pole position, Jeff Kingsley for Kelly Moss first race. A little bit of ground on that last lap as Riley Dickinson set a new fastest lap of the race. The uh, uh, two is 8.0. Uh, they are braver men than I. And that is uh, a real, real test of uh, stamina down the Baja Peninsula. Something I've always wanted to go and see. I'm not sure I'd want to take part in it, to be honest. I'm not sure I'm up to that. Good luck to them all, of course. Across the line for the lead, all of a sudden out to 2.7 seconds, Jeremy. So that was a very good lap last time around by Riley Dickinson. Indeed, the fastest lap of the race. Indeed, yeah, a, 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 uh, the, 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 he, he's c continuing to pull away there. Two or eight. But still. Two or eight, zero, one, five there from Riley Dickinson. And that's why that gap has gone up. Jeff Kingsley in second with the green bonnet stripe has Sean McAllister now, Jeremy, for uh, company in the JDX racing car. Yep. And uh, that battle for uh, the uh, fifth position continues there. Uh, but uh, and now it looks like uh, Charlie Luck is coming increasing pressure uh, and uh, TJ Fisher having found, found a way past Sebastian Carrazzo is now really putting the pressure on to Charlie Luck as they head into that turn 10, 11 and 12 complex. Such a technical circuit here. Look at Sebring on paper and you think, right, right, there's a couple of long straights, a couple of twiddly bits here and there, but really it can't be that hard. <laughs> I beg to differ. There are some vagaries here. There's a lot of bumps sometimes. And you've raced on part of this circuit, Jeremy. Sometimes you don't take what looks to be the classic racing line because, and it depends, of course, what car you're racing in, but particularly for GT cars, which are generally speaking quite heavy uh, and they move around a lot, sometimes you're actually having to maybe compromise an entry to a corner or a, a, a traversing through it because of those bumps, which aren't ever getting any better. They do seem to change year on year and just change the the character of some of the corners slightly. Yeah, no, you're right. It, it doesn't get any any smoother out there uh, with the passing years here, that's for sure. But uh, it's certainly, you know, the, the, the challenge has always been there. It remains, uh, and it, it's just a, you know, a great race segment. A lot of drivers, well, some drivers kind of complain about the bumps, but the, the real racers don't. It's just part of the character of this racetrack. And that's one of the great things, I think, about uh, 
the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge and IMSA in general is the uh, the, the whole broad uh, array of tracks on which they compete during a regular season. Yes, agree with that, Jeremy, very much because... And the, the other thing that we love about this championship and that this element that I'm about to talk about won't disappear is the nice mix that we have between what I might call, and you and I might call, career drivers, tend to be younger drivers coming up through the ranks. They get in a race in front of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship team, owners, managers, and, and indeed sponsors, uh, and people who are still racing for the sheer enjoyment of it because they've got to a place in their life where they have uh, the, the wherewithal both in time and in finance to still be able to race. And that's exactly what is going on out on the circuit at the moment as the white number 56, which is one of those young charges, uh, that uh, being TJ Fisher, passes Charlie Luck, who is certainly enjoying uh, his racing for right motorsport. And that was for fifth position. Classic Sebring overtake into one of the uh, right-handed 90-degree corners. Heavy braking area from a fast run. Uh, that makes for a good opportunity to overtake, and that's exactly what TJ just did. Yeah, beautifully executed there for, for TJ. A little bit disappointed to qualify back in the in the sixth position. He has a good, uh, strong weekend uh, last time out in, in these cars, but uh, he, he sort of struggled a little bit for pace here at Sebring. Of course, we're on the, the streets of St. Petersburg, not too far away from here, only a couple of hours' drive away from here uh, a couple of weeks ago. So... Uh, now, but uh, he's, uh, he, he's he's into the groove now. Is T.J. Fisher, and I think he's perhaps you know, he, the, the bumps here are seeming. They'll probably serve him well for next week when he goes down to Baja. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hashtag for Sebring International Raceway has been for quite some time, respect the bumps, and you really do have to do that. Sebastian Carrazzo now just porting the new teal blue nose of the 27 Porsche out from underneath the rear wing of Charlie Luck in sixth position. That's sixth and seventh together, not too far back is the ACI Motorsports number 24 car as well with the very, very bright purple uh, flashes on that car. And that car is going to make this another three-way battle. And that, again, will be for sixth, seventh and eighth position. Jeremy? Yeah, it will. And uh, Kurt Hunt's closed in quite nicely there in car number 24 in the eighth position. Uh, Kurt is a, another newcomer to this series this year. He's from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, driving another of the uh, ACI Motorsports cars. Uh, and uh, yeah, he has moved up very, very nicely there. He's, he's, he's really putting the pressure now on Sebastian, Car Sebastian Carrazzo, who was last year's Gold Cup champion, of course, for Puerto Rico. And Kurt uh, Hunt now is, uh, is really beginning, yeah, almost, almost beginning to put the pressure, I would say, on to uh, Carrazzo. And Charlie Luck is hanging on there. Charlie Luck's had a really good uh, recent run in the championship. It's been, it's been over 20 races since his last school. A, a master's class win, but he finally put that that to rights uh, at uh, at uh, Michelin Raceway Road Atlanta last month, uh, where he swept the weekend. It was a bad weekend for uh, for Alan Metney, and uh, Charlie Luck stepped up to the plate. He won three races in a row. They also won one of the two rounds in the Masters Cup at St. Petersburg as well. So it's been a really good end to the season for Charlie Luck, the 14, car number 45 got left on the clock 28 minutes let's call it so about a third of the race completed remember we started off with uh, 30 minutes on the clock just a little locked Yokohama going into turn 17 sunset by Charlie look in the rainbow 40 oh now hang on hang on this is unusual now maybe that wasn't a lot but maybe that was a little bit of smoke coming out of the left hand rear exhaust of that car on the downshift. I thought it was a locked Yokohama, but there's definitely something. Now, is that scraping the ground? Is there a Yokohama catching on the inner wheel arch on the uh, right rear, excuse me, right-hand side of that, uh, at the back of that car? There's definitely something awry there, Jeremy. Uh, and again, that's the sort of thing that rarely gets better when there's still half an hour of the race to go. Yes, it is getting it is getting worse, and I was right the first time. I should have stayed with that. It is coming from the left-hand rear of that number 45 car, and race control will be seeing that as well and asking the corner workers if they can smell oil or see anything going down 
onto the circuit. Yeah, they will. And a little bit further back uh, down the order, this is the battle for the Gold Cup category between Carlo 65, Efri Castro and Richard Edge, who was a first-time pole sitter. Uh, in the ACI car, car number 18, but uh, it was Efri Castro who got the advantage at the start, and he is uh, leading now, but he's not being able to pull away at all for Richard Edge. This has been far and away the best uh, performance of the season for, for Richard here. He's really stepping up to the plate with Kurt Swearing and his ACI teammates already in the pits and out of this race. Richard Edge, though, is uh, hurrying Efri Castro really, really hard as we see Sebastian Carrazzo doing the same to Charlie Luck. Edge just set a new fastest oh, lap. Pit stop. The uh, race in the Gold Cup category is Charlie Luck comes into the pits. Yeah, and I think that is because they've realised that there is a, a, an in a, 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 a problem. This is on the back straight, so he pulls off just before turn 16, and clearly some kind of problem for Charlie. He'll be disappointed with that, and with that, I think, cause any chance of the Masters category in platinum, Jeremy, particularly with Alan Metney leading that class at the moment. Yeah, I mean, he, he came, yes, absolutely, that, that's, that's correct. Uh, Alan Metney had a, a pretty commanding 27-point lead coming into the, these uh, final couple of races, and really all he needed to do was start them. Uh, and indeed, uh, Alan Metney is doing a lot better than that. He's running in the fourth position overall and uh, comfortably ahead of all the other Masters class contenders. So uh, this will indeed wrap it up for uh, Alan Metney if he can stay where he is right now. This battle for Gold Cup is still carrying on. Yeah. And that is going on at full tilt. And um, well done to Richard Edge for holding on to the black and yellow car of... Uh, the Efren Castro TPC racing car, because Efren has been very quick indeed. And Richard just getting better and better, I reckon, through yeah. this season. His confidence levels really come up. Had a really good couple of weekends at uh, Road Atlanta. The first race uh, weekend that we had at Road Atlanta, he, uh, he put in a decent performance. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things, Jeremy, driving, racing driving is a much as much about what's going on in the side, the head, as it is with what you do with your hands and your feet, uh, and he's really got some confidence now. Well, he has. You know, he's he's had uh, uh, several second place finishes in the Gold Cup category as Richard Edge, uh, but uh, both in qualifying and in the race, but not yet a, a win. He he got his first pole yesterday, and he's still looking for that first win. He, he's had, Richard Edge has set the fastest lap of the race, the Armour fastest lap of the race at the moment in the. Gold Cup, but the two minutes 12.456 that just edges out every cash. There's one minute 12.488 a second between those two in lap times, and it's uh, remaining that way out on the racetrack as well. That's Jeremy Shaw, I'm John Hindhoff, and there are 23 and a bit minutes to go. Let's call it 23 and a half for the sake of it. As Efren Castro guides his car through the last part of the Jean de Bian bends and onto the long back straight. Got another battle a little further up the field. Eighth and ninth, Michael Manella and Bart Collins. Both MCR racing Porsches, both very white. Uh, both in the platinum class, you can tell that because they've got black numbers. And Manella from Collins at the moment, four from five, going through uh, turn yeah. three. Now, have they just swapped over there? They have, haven't they? So that's Collins just gone uh, through, is it? Yes, it is. Yes. So and that looks to be team orders there, to be honest, because there wasn't much well, fighting there. Well, they're team mates, uh, that's for sure. And, uh, and Bart Collins, he's making his first start in the Platinum class this weekend. He's been driving a, uh, a Gold Cup car up until now. And uh, he's done a really, really good job. Both of these two are from Florida. Bart Collins is from Pembroke Pines. Michael Manella from Boca Raton. As I say, teammates at MCR Racing. Uh, and uh, I think Michael realised there that Bart was a little bit quicker. So he's going to let him go. He's not going to get stand in his way. And it is now uh, Bart Collins who, who has the lead in their, in their intra-team battle. And he moves up into the eighth position overall. A really good run for Bart Collins.
Riley Dickinson has set sail at the front of the field. We haven't spoken about him for a while. Now over four seconds to the good over Jeff Kingsley in the number 16. Kelly Moss Road race, the white with the green stripe down the middle. Uh, and then it's about uh, another four or five seconds back to Sean McAllister. Then a couple of seconds back to Mechney. And then TJ Fisher has about eight seconds to make up. So fairly equidistant until we get down to the battle for the gold category in 13th and 14th overall. Castro and Edge, 65 and 18. Yellow and black in front of the shades of blue and white. Lovely colour scheme uh, on the number 18 Porsche. A little bit of black on the flanks of that car as well. And just on the nose, a sort of a nod to the Porsche Works colours with the shield uh, on the front end of there in that metallic blue. Looks very good indeed uh, for the ACI Motorsports driver, Richard Edge. Hasn't won his class this season yet, but has only one car ahead of him to get into the lead with still 20 minutes to go here at Sebring International Raceway for the second to last race of the 2020 IMSA Porsche GP3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama season. Down into turn one, Jeremy, Efren Castro with his mirrors still pretty full of Richard Edge. Richard not quite close enough though to put a a real determined move on that uh, black and yellow 911 ahead. And as I say that, of course, at turn three, he just starts to close in and starts to look a, a little more interested in taking that lead spot in GT3 Gold. Yes, yeah, super battle going on between these two. Uh, and Efren, Ca uh, Efren Castro uh, has, uh, his, has his work cut out here. He's been the uh, closest contender to Kurt Swingen all the way through the season. He, he's had uh, he's won the category on five occasions this year, has Efren, to the nine of Kurt Swingen. But now, uh, in the in that third position, Richard Edge, he's, uh, he's, he's had a, a good season, certainly, for him. He's just getting better and better and better. And with his teammate, Kurt Swingen, not in the, uh, in the fray this, this morning, uh, Richard Edge is really looking for that first win. He's clearly got a good car. He has set the fastest lap. He's actually reset the fastest lap of the race uh, last time around at 2 minutes 12.409 for Richard Edge in that second place car, car number 18 in the Gold Cup category. Yeah, remember Kurt Swearing and only needing to start both of the races this weekend to win the championship. Has uh, already pulled out of this one. Uh, we expect to see him later on this fast Friday to start the race and claim the championship. Little bit of damage, a bit of rubbing on the left front of the 65 of Efren Castro. Now, haven't seen that in this race. That might be a wee battle scar from earlier on the weekend. It does, maybe my eyes deceive me, looking like the left front headlight was slightly pointing towards the middle of the car. Might just be the uh, way the light is falling on it this early morning. Still only coming on just at half past eight, 8.30 in the morning here at Sebring and the overhead conditions really diffusing the light in places around Sebring International Raceway. Lovely stuff. Very used to seeing a bit of low-lying fog across the areas around this former training base training base always when we get here in March for the traditional time of year that the mobile 112 as I say bring runs always puts me in mind of the morning June with that temperature inversion and the low-lying mist uh, around the area beside the racetrack as a colleague of ours Charles Dressing who uh, hails from not too far away from where we are now up in Jacksonville uh, always uh, used to say it to me about Le Mans, a maniac driving at 200 miles an hour through an impressionist painting when the fog, came, early morning fog, came down at the Circuit de la Sarthe. He was much better at words than I am, but I know exactly what he means, and that conjures up images that, that we often see in the early morning here as well. 17 minutes to go, Sean McAllister has 
Still got Alan Metney for company. It's like Metney's well, closed in a little bit there. He, he has. He's been closing. Uh, he, he's been closing pr pr pretty steadily on the, that third place car of Sean McAllister. The gap now down to 1.3 seconds. A half a second. Alan Metney pulled in on McAllister last time around, uh, and in fact, uh, McAllister, I think he's upping his pace as well. He's a, a little bit closer to the second place car of Jeff Kingsley than he was previously. If Kingsley settled in now to a pretty comfortable second place. Riley Dickinson uh, on the previous lap, we've just completed 30 laps on lap 14, uh, and uh, Riley Dickinson on the previous lap set a new fastest lap of the race, probably at 7.7. Well, that's uh, sir, quite a long way away from the old lap record, the lap record here that was set back in 2017 by Jake but uh, he's certainly in control of this race out front, but uh, absolutely not very much in control. Is Efrain Castro in the Gold Cup. He still leads it, but the gap uh, between himself and Richard Edge remains at less than a half a second. Turn three for the gold battle. Yellow wing mirrors, or door mirrors, should I say, more accurately. Yellow flashes on the shade band at the top of the windscreen and yellow wing end plates, as well as yellow number panels for gold cup cars. These are the uh, slightly older 991 cup cars. Generation one or Gen one in Porsche parlance, 3.8 engine, the last of the Metzger engined Porsche cup cars, of course. What a history that engine has down through the years in both the 3.6 and 3.8 configuration. These cars coming to the end of their racing life in the Porsche Cup next year. It will be 992, the brand new body shape, mirroring the street cars. 992 been on sale for a little while now. Uh, and the 991 Gen 2 will be grandfathered in for a season as well. So expect to see some of the cars that we have on track at the moment back for the brand new Porsche Carrera Cup North America in 2021. With a bit of luck, we'll be talking about it again, Jeremy, because I can't wait to see mm. those 992 Cup cars. I've seen pictures, I've not seen video of them moving at the moment. They look absolutely stunning. Across the start line and down into turn one now. We've got the battle for 11th and 12th. David Brulé Senior and Victor McClure. Kelly Moss and TPC Racing, two of the big teams. The Uber teams, I suppose you could call them. Multiple cars being run out of their paddock areas. Under 14 minutes to go now. And these two having a scrap for 11th and 12th in category. They are. For Vernon McClure there in, in car number 10, so disappointing qualifying run uh, for him. He, he's normally uh, further up the order than this, but uh, he's he's now closed up on uh, David Bruley and looking to to make that pass and get up inside uh, the, well, the back, as you say, for 11th position. But now side by side of the two Gold Cup contenders heading towards the hairpin. Brilliant stuff, and again, another classic overtaking manoeuvre underneath the walkover bridge. Castro's gone to the right-hand side to defend to the inside of the corner. Richard Edge, that was brilliant stuff from both drivers. We often talk about racing room, perfect illustration of it just there as they went side by side, but with great respect for each other. Edge knew he was going to have to go around the long way try to get to the second part of turn seven, the left-handed part first and stick his nose in, wasn't quite able to do that. And meantime, Sean McAllister has been caught going through turn one by the Masters category leader, Alan Metney. So that's another battle that's coming to life with just over 12 minutes to go. Yeah, this race really is livening up, isn't it? Now, we're not, not, not so in the lead because Riley Dickinson, he's just cruising now. Uh, two minutes, 8.7 last time around, so a full second away from his fastest lap of the race. But some of the other, these other contenders, uh, they're on it right now. Uh, and uh, Alan Metney having closed in on Sean McAllister, he's looking to get uh, not only another Masters class win, which would be uh, his... Uh, 
was uh, seven, uh, eight, nine, his tenth of the season, but also trying to get back on the overall podium. Uh, that would be for the uh, for the fifth time this year. So it's been a really good season for Alan Metney. Meanwhile, back in the Gold Cup cars, this is this battle just continues, and both of these two are pushing themselves to the limit. Uh, a new fastest lap a couple of laps ago for Efren Castro now, who's retaken the edge, if you excuse the pun, uh, in terms of fastest lap. Uh, two minutes 12.0 to the two minutes 12.1 of uh, Richard Edge, but this battle is hot and heavy right now. Down into turn three again, and there is not even a quarter of a 9.11's length between these two cars, taking a wide entry into turn four, straightening it up for turn five that pretty much runs into turn six. Big bend underneath the bridge, the new-ish, couple of seasons old now, that uh, Corvette drive-over bridge. Back down to the hairpin. Used to go straight on there, of course, and run much closer to the edge of the property. But that was deemed, um, I think, reasonably a little bit too dangerous with the kind of speed that the cars were getting up to. There was zero runoff area there. There's a public roadway just outside of that. And I have seen somebody who's brakes filled in a, an historic event go straight on there, crash through the gates and have to drive back round uh, and in through <laughs> the hotel car park to get back to the pits. Uh, so that was shortened up quite a few years ago now. Uh, one, one or two of the uh, older generation who've been around for a while originally called that not the hairpin but the safety pin uh, to <laughs> reflect why that had been put in. But you've got to say, Jeremy, down through the years, whatever slight amendments have been made here at Sebring, what the, you can never take away here so long as you're using the old taxiways uh, and the old, uh, the old uh, concrete runways. Uh, is you cannot simply cannot take away the character and the atmosphere of this place it's absolutely magnificent uh, and in road racing terms probably unparalleled in, in the US yeah I know it, it is great land the history here it just it is uh, tremendous uh, but now uh, Sean McKelsey he's having to defend from Alan Metney I think that's the the lapped car of uh, Danny Hardy just ahead of them on the racetrack uh, but uh, this is going to give uh, kind of renewed impetus, I think, for Alan Metley to try and find a way past Sean McAllister. And, so, and certainly, as we saw uh, under break of the turn 10, McAllister was beginning to adopt a, a defensive line there. He's kind of looking in these mirrors and making sure, or trying to make sure, there's no way through, no, no way through for Alan Metley. So I think at this point, uh, he's, he's going to be uh, held up there, I think, is, uh, is Sean McAllister. This is going to give the opportunity uh, heading into Jean de Robens for Alan Metley side by side, John. Absolutely together. They pull out to the right-hand side and through goes Metney. Metney takes the, over the position and that then is a podium spot for the Masters leader. He has won outright this year. First time for a very long time that someone from the Masters uh, had uh, won. Oh, and off. The 24 has gone off the circuit and that looks to have been quite a big incident uh, over at the Jean de Bian Benz, but gets going again. Uh, do you know, for a moment, I thought it was a different car, but it is, in fact, Kurt Hunt. Now, did he jump or was he pushed in the ACI Motorsports car? He was running inside the top 10. He's dropped back a little bit. Meantime, back to that battle for third overall. We stayed green there, by the way. Good work by race control. Sometimes no call is the right call. They just waited to see whether that was going to play out, and it did. And the battle for third is side by side again, going down through turn six to turn seven. Change of surface. Very difficult braking there. Round the outside. McAllister's giving it a go and get the inside for the next part of the, co the corner, but drops back in again. This is quality stuff. Total commitment from both drivers as they battle for the final step on the podium. Great stuff, that really is a good battle. And I don't think uh, there have been any uh, shenanigans there for Kurt Hunt. He was chasing after Sebastian Carrazzo. I don't think he was close enough, though, to make a move. He probably just uh, lost it on his own there. But this battle for what is now third position is absolutely the best battle on the racetrack. Uh, Side that's from the uh, Gold Cup cars, which uh, which continues. But Alan Metley, having got that position 
uh, now having started uh, in the fourth position on this uh, on, in this race and fallen back quite a long way. He fell about as much as three and a half seconds behind Sean McAllister in the early stages. He's made up that deficit and got the lead, and Al Metney will want to hold it. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter which circuit you're on. We always seem to find a really tight battle in the IMSA Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama. The gold battle is down at turn seven in front of the hotel. And it's still that yellow and black number 65 of Efren Castro for TPC Racing. He's got the Yokohama fastest lap of the race in the gold class. Two minutes, 12.072. Uh, at the front of the field, it's Riley Dickinson with a 2.077. That is a very good lap indeed from Riley Dickinson for the Yokohama fastest lap in Platinum. Now, there's been another change of position as well as Vernon McClure has just nipped by in the last lap or so uh, in uh, David uh, Bruley Sr., hasn't he? Yes, he has. Uh, so that was the battle for 11th and 12th, and 11th at the moment is the number 10 car. Don't, it doesn't take much to confuse me. I'm a bear of small brain. Do like that white with red stripe car, and McClure then takes over the position and has put, what, eight, nine cars lengths uh, into the car that he was battling, David Brilley Senior. Yes, and uh, it's, that has been a good battle, and again, a nice clean pass there for that position as the two Gold Cup leaders head down the Alec, Alec Oldman straight one more time. And it uh, looks like now this might be the uh, the biggest lead that Efren Castro has <laughs> uh, this entire race. It might be as much as three or four cars lengths as they're headed to Sunset Bend on this time around. But I don't think Richard Edge has given up the uh, given up the battle just yet. And suddenly, just under five minutes to go. Where has the last 40 minutes disappeared to? So not only a Porsche great looking and sounding race cars, but apparently they have the ability to bend time as well, because we seem to have dropped into some kind of crease in the time space continuum. I have no clue where the uh, time since the start has disappeared to. And still we have a great battle for the gold category lead. Efren Castro and Richard Edge Richard will know every square inch of the back of that TPC racing black and yellow car ahead of him as he goes down to turn seven. It's been a fairly lonely race for more speeds. Riley Dickinson at the front of the field who rounds turn one, giving himself plenty of room uh, on the right-hand exit curve. They're barely running the right-hand side. Jorgen Harmer's maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a half onto the serrated curb there. Just gives a little bit of feedback through the suspension and the steering to let you know how close you are to the edge of the road. The number 53 car has not been headed since he took the lead at the drop of the green flag. Started on the outside of the front row and has made best that position. Now pulling out to a 13 and a half second lead. Can't say that about Castro and Edge who continue to have their elbows out and fists clenched in a proper, proper battle at the front of goal. Jeremy Shaw. Yeah, it's, it's a really good battle, isn't it, between these two? And, uh, you know, they both returned some really good lap times uh, last time around, mid, mid two minute 12, so within a half a sec second of their fastest laps of the race. Uh, and I think Efren Castro, now, you know, he's kind of put his head down, he's focusing forward, he's trying to uh, put a bit of distance between himself and uh, Richard Edge. And uh, it's what, four or five car lengths as they head into Sunset Bend this time around. So, Almost identical lap times being turned by these two, even now in the latter stages of this race. Probably be uh, a couple of laps to go. Sunshine beginning to break through the early morning mist and low cloud at Sebring International Raceway, the home of American endurance racing and the original venue for the US Grand Prix. My goodness, the history that this place has seen down through the years. And this weekend adds to the stories that could be told from this circuit with the final couple of rounds of the IMSA Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yokohama and the final couple of rounds in the championship as we move to a Porsche Carrera Cup USA for 2021. And the Gold Cup category is going out in style 
with Efren Castro and Richard Edge still at it, under two minutes to go. And they are still battling for the penultimate top step of the podium for this 2020 season. TPC Racing versus ACI, the two teams that have been battling for this championship. Kurt Swearingen with one hand on the championship trophy, only needed to start both of the races this weekend. He started race one and retired. He'll start the second one, I'm sure, earlier, uh, later on this fast Friday. 90 seconds to go. Looks like there'll be another lap after this one through the Jean de Bian bends. Really difficult for Richard Edge to continue to keep up his concentration. He has been right in the wheel tracks of Efren Castro, Jeremy Shaw, for what, 40, 40 minutes, maybe more? Yeah, 44 minutes, a 45 minute race. We've got exactly a minute to go now. So it'll be, and, you know, and he's got closer again. This has been a good lap for Richard Edge. He's closed that gap to Efren Castro. Just a, a car length, maybe a car length and a half behind as they head into Sunset Bend. And he's going to look to the inside. That was so brave. Very difficult to get done. White flag this time around. Three and three quarter miles for, oh. I didn't see a white flag this time around. So the leader must be far enough ahead that the yeah. leader, who of course is Riley Dickinson, the overall leader, must have got through with enough time to do one more. So there's this and one more, I reckon. So that's exactly very right. interesting. We've, we, we've got a little more. That's fantastic. We promise you 45 minutes and we're going to over deliver. Yeah, seven seconds on the clock. White flag this time for Riley Dickinson. He's the leader of the race. So spot on by race control. They were watching the clock counting down. I hadn't realised that Riley was so far up the road, but he's got 13 and a half seconds on the rest of the platinum class field. So excellent. We get a bit of extra racing, Jeremy Shaw, from the gold category. And that means another lap for Richard Edge to plan, to scheme, to try and find somewhere where his Porsche from ACI Motorsports is slightly better than the TPC racing car driven by Efren Castro ahead. Yeah, no complaints for me to see another lap of this, uh, this intense Correct. battle uh, because Richard Edge really uh, has closed right in on the tail of Efren Castro and there's nothing between them as they head through turn 13. Uh, it'll be one more lap uh, after this one, won't it? Because they, uh, they, haven't, they haven't yet taken the white flag. A couple of uh, late retirements, by the way, both Kurt Hunt and Bart Collins, unfortunately, mm. just been into the pits over the last couple of laps and I think they've parked their car. So that's a shame, particularly for Bart Collins, who was running up there in the seventh position, looking for his, his career best finish. Unfortunately, that's not going to come, not going to happen this morning, but maybe later on in the day. Yeah, and I did notice that uh, Frank Rasso got by Vernon McClure a lap or so uh, ago. So whether uh, Frank had made a mistake and dropped back no, or whether he's fighting it, uh, his way back through. Uh, other way around, actually, is Vernon McClure is closing on Frank Rasso, in fact. Oh, right, well, he, he must have he he got, got past him. Vernon got past him from Lay, yeah. and now he's closing on Frank Razzo. Yeah, he, he must have actually, for him, at least at the line, got past Frank Razzo because I did see the notification on the timing screen, the little green arrow, to say Frank Razzo had made up a position. So um, they have, but they must have been very close together at one stage uh, as they were battling. And there's the pass coming out of turn one where we said uh, time to plot and scheme. He didn't need to take the three and three quarter miles. Richard Edges into the lead of gold and platinum for the penultimate race of the 2020 season has been dominated by Riley Dickinson of more speed. He takes the victory, but Edge and Efren Castro are side by side through Big Bend. Edge was in the lead. He's to the right hand side, the inside of the circuit at turn seven. They turn in too wide. My goodness, again, this is brilliant stuff. Well, these guys, I think, and I hope that this ends 
in the same way that it's been raced for the previous 46 and a half minutes, uh, Jeremy, because these two guys have been in a cracking race down the outside again for Efren Castro. They'll go side by side and they do touch. They do touch and Castro goes up in the air. He's going to spin on the very damp grass, takes out one of the advertising hoardings and Richard Edge will take his first victory of the season. It was optimistic by Efren Castro, but it is the last lap of the race as he tried to go round the outside going into uh, turn 10 and there was just a little touch mm. side by no. side wheel to wheel there yeah no that was uh, that was unnecessary I, I in my opinion for Richard Edge it was every Castro had made a mistake at turn one to slide wide uh, and give Richard Edge the lead but uh, for my money there Richard, they, they, they were side by side through the middle of the corner and uh, Richard Edge just tracked out much wider than he needed to, in my opinion. Uh, of course, he was taking a tighter line, so he needed to use more room on the exit, but the car was already there alongside him. The stewards are going to have a look at, look at that, but it's certainly been a fantastic battle between these two. And it's certainly going to be uh, Richard uh, Edge who's going to come across and take the check and flag for the first time in his uh, Gold Cup career. Checkered flag is out and Richard Edge, who's improved race on race in 2020, takes his first Gold Cup category of the season for ACI, taking the lead at the start of the last lap, but contact at turn 10 has been looked at by race control as Castro comes through in second position and the TPC Racing driver well can't see his demeanor through the windscreen and underneath the helmet they had raced so cleanly together shame they came together at the end uh, side by side racing and i wouldn't like to call that one from race control and gets the decision made there I'm always of the opinion that if you put yourself on the outside, you've put yourself in trouble and you shouldn't expect somebody to wave you by. I know Jeremy doesn't see it that way. Well, you just don't drive somebody off the road. Uh, you, know, you, you just you have respect, uh, which, which is, as you say, exactly what they had all the way through the race. But take nothing away from the youngest driver in the field, Riley Dickinson, just 18 years of age. That was a magnificent victory for Riley Dickinson. Yes, uh, and uh, Jeff Kingsley in second with Alan Metney. Uh, winning the Masters on the Platinum in the uh, in the Platinum class and on the overall Platinum podium. Great wins then for Riley Dickinson. Question mark over Richard Edge. That's been looked at. That was your first race this weekend from Sebring for the Porsche GT3 Cup Challenge USA by Yorga Harbour.